Hi everybody. Okay, welcome back. So in this demo, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, our piece that we've been working on that I've been working out throughout all the demos here. And um, what I'm going to start to do is um, we're going to start to talk a little bit about polishing, about adding in some detail, uh, fixing up some areas. So let's just talk about that for a minute. By the way, um, last time I was working on this one and I enlarged this and then I put some stuff down here and I took a second look at it and I really don't like what I was doing up here. I like what's down here. So what I'm going to do is that's on a separate layer. I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring that back into my other location here. So I like part of this that I was getting built up in there. I like that transition to say, actually I sort of like that too. And here, so I'm going to just grab all this right now and then I'm just going to copy that and there's nothing wrong with doing that. You know, I got to a point, I didn't like it. I had a perspective issue in there. It just, I wasn't getting the vibe once I left away, walked away from it, got a fresh set of eyes, and I sort of like what's going on in here. So I'm gonna copy and paste that element in here, and then I'm gonna work, pause, work, and pause, and I'll show you some of the finishing variations that I'm gonna do for sort of polishing. So talking about polishing, well, my sky is really bland now. You can just see a little bit of clouds in there, but nothing too major. Um, and look, I still have rough line in here. I never figured out those shapes or cleaned up any of that line. I could identify this a little bit. And another step for polishing that I really like, um, just a couple things to throw at you. Number one would be uh, adding in scale to get a good, I, you know, good idea and understanding of scale. So I thought I'd show you how I might make a spaceship or two from a, just a, a, a little picture, or a little copy and paste of a refinery or something and paint into it. Um, and then the next thing I like to do is I like to add in shadows, add in highlights. Um, I'll add in some clouds to get my composition to work the way that I want. And um, sometimes I might add in little things like little teeny details like, uh, you know, maybe there's some birds flying up in the air up in here. Maybe depending on the location, I could have some branches or twigs or something else moving around. But those are the little things that I'm talking about, just adding in little bits and pieces to sort of you know, modify the composition. So again, when we're talking about polishing now, you know, I want to get rid of all this line that's in here. I want to define this a little bit. Even as I zoom into this composition just a little bit more, you know, I have areas in here. Look, I just have white smack down. I like the way this is starting to work up here, like it's brown rock blending in here. But there's some other shadows. I got an open area there. So that's the part now I want to go in here. And then some of this I'll just paint over and smooth a little bit and then get some a better transition happening in there. I did fix part of that perspective in here. I adjusted that a little bit. Um, I also knocked this down just a teeny bit. I put a little bit of a shadow on there. I also might knock that down just a little bit more and get that to drop back and make that a little bit lighter back in here. And then I'm gonna fix part of that grid that's on there. So this is the polishing phase. It's adding on all these cool little details, okay? All right, so um, where do we start first? Well, let me paste that image in here that I had. So if I hit command paste and nothing happened, let's try that again. Let's come back here and let me make sure, that's why I had the wrong layer selected. That was my bad here. There we go. So actually part of that is tied into the foreground, midground. So what I'm gonna do is just select um, just all these layers right here. I'm gonna merge them together so I can get what I want out of that piece. Copy that and then I'm just gonna close that because I'm not gonna use that anymore. Nope, not saving the changes. And then I'll come back in here and I'll paste that in. See, I had some detail in there that was working. Um, in there, I like that getting defined. And actually, this ties in a little bit to what I was imagining for part of the light, or I should say part of the sun coming through, is that's actually not too bad right in there. And then I could get this to fade in. I imagined what I was going to do in this demo too, is see, I imagine if light's hitting spots here, then I'm going to come down here with a lasso and select parts of that rock and I'm going to try to define part of the typology of the rock or the form of it and get some really cool um, details to sort of pop in there. You guys watched the demo earlier on how I created that texture. It's just white with like a rough brush and some splatter on there. And it starts to blend in and I get some cool little rock, you know, formations happening in there. So um, let me go in. Let's, let us let me work on that a little bit more here. And um, I think I'll see if I can get a little bit of that going while you're here with me right now. Let me see. That's sort of cool. That ties in there pretty cool, fits in there. Um, however, this foreground element is not the way that I would want it to be. So I might come in here and command Z that go back and forth. 
that's actually a nice tie-in that brings us in, into the mountains too. So I don't know. I keep going back and forth on it. So what I like to do, I'll paint for a little bit. I'm not going to talk into the recorder as much because then I get too focused in there. So just bear with me for a little bit and let me just just try to take my what I what I sense or feel to be correct here and get stuff to sort of blend in. Um, I like the rocks fitting like right right about there because I could blend that in really nicely and it feels rocky and like comes down here. So let's commit to that. And then what I want to do is I need to get this that's in here. I don't know remember how I copied and pasted that. So I'm going to hit Control C to copy and then I'm going to delete that out of there right now. And I think I remember how I did put that in there because um, um, I raised this up to get it a little bit closer. So what I'm going to do now, come up above my foreground when I hit paste, that layer goes right above. So now I can maybe get this in here a little bit more and figure out what Phil was thinking earlier. I might transform it a little bit. So I think I was getting just a little bit more definition in there. And that's pretty cool. I like how that sort of fits in about right there. And then look at that. See if I get some larger rock and highlight here and then this transfer is in there. I like that a lot. That's actually working pretty good. So let's commit. Let's uh, merge these two layers. Let me double check one thing. Yeah, I want to make sure I wasn't covering that white highlight right there because I sort of like that. So I'm going to merge these two layers together. Okay, I'm going to type in FG here. Okay, so I saved my cloud layers because that was from the initial demo all together. And then once I merge this layer in here and start to paint a little bit on top of it. Okay. Um, once I get that in together, I mean, I'm, I noticed I was walking around in class the other day and I had some people that just had, I mean, it was like layer madness. You know, you can't have 50 layers, you guys. It's going to be so hard. You just got to commit. Look at that. There's my mid ground committed in there. And now I'm going to get in there and paint a little bit and try to blend that hillside. And I think that's where I went wrong when I, in the other one, when I zoomed up here again, you know, um, I was, well, I was working on my laptop when I did that. I was zoomed in so close, I was starting to pencil. But you know, when you gotta zoom out your composition and you look, I have enough detail that's happening in there. In fact, I have too much detail and you know, part of that grid structure that's in there, I need to thin those lines down quite a bit. So I'm gonna work on doing that a little bit today too, okay, inside the demo here. So let's start, let's start blending some of this in to here. Let's get that progression start to happen, okay? Oops, because um, right now I can definitely you know, as I look at this, I can see that it's not blending. So again, what I'll do is I'll create another layer. That way I can show you the changes that are happening inside the recording, okay? And then I'm just gonna come in here and uh, just take the, one of the brushes I have and just start painting a little bit and start to get things to connect a little bit, you know? Um, and um, sometimes, I, I notice on some of you guys, I noticed your brush stroke was staying the same a lot bear with me i get a little see that i'm getting a lag there after i paint that's because of the recorder but that's okay we're going to try to get by without it i like that brown transition we got some cool and you know get i never got some of this detail in there I like some of that rock that was sort of popping through right there and even from here it might come through a little bit more okay Yeah, get some of that. That's really cool. I just like how that, and I'm looking at this. I'm like, man, I could just have snow on that, have a little bit darker. So let's do that. Let's define that. Imagine this is like a big boulder, this sort of in the front here. I'm just going to select on top of there. I might select a little area like that. And let's go to levels here. Okay. It helps for the fills on the right layer, which I wasn't. There we go. Okay. And uh, this is the problem with talking at the same time. There. So I got that to pronounce out a little bit. Okay, that top is just fine. So now I'm gonna take my lasso and I'm gonna deselect this area here. And let's go back to levels and let's get this area to pop out a little bit more in here. Okay, like that, there we go. Okay, there, so now that pops out a little bit more. And then what I'm gonna do is this rock that's back behind it, I wanna get a little bit of shadow. So I'm just gonna come in here and select just, oops, even that was a bad selection. There we go. That's a little bit better in there. You know what? Let me see. How do I want... Let's do it like this. We'll just go right over the top of it. I was wondering about the back side. I'll see if I can just end it down. Maybe bring it something in like this a little. Okay, and then what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to hit H. I'm going to hide my ants. 
okay? And I'm just gonna pick up sort of this darker shadow value that I have. And sometimes when I swab a color, it picks up a little bit of the local color, so then I, dark, I just drop it down about 30% more. And then, because I'm gonna be painting it at like 30% opacity. And see, now if I, what I'm doing is see, I'm dropping that shadow behind part of that highlight in there because it, it's gonna get part of that white of the rock to blend in. That's it, deselect. That simple, just a little adjustment there. And now I wanna get some of this to blend in to here as well. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna grab some of this right here. Sorry guys, you can hear my dogs in the back. They're sleeping in their bed. They like to come in when I come in and work in my little studio. They like to make a little appearance and hang out as well, okay? Which is fine. So there, I'm just gonna just get in here, try to blend some of this, get some nice little crisp edges in here, get some of this to work a little bit easier. And then if I get something that's like a cool highlight, maybe that just needs to be blended in and fit a little bit better. And there, I like some of that transition where it's like over the gray of the rocks, but then see how jumbled up that gets? So I'm just gonna touch some of it and smooth it off a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit of a darker facade that's in there, okay? And I like that, because you get those little dark pitted shadows in areas that, you know, I might be casting off a part of the snow or whatever. And then I like this transition. What I really like, now this is something to do with lighting at the end. I like that orange highlights and how it's transitioning. So it's like the light's coming through and hitting part here and then maybe there's shadow wrapping over here and then part of it hits over here. That can be a lot of fun for when I get into some shadow and just a little bit here, I can identify that up a little bit more. Um, what I do need to identify though, is here's my foreground element here. And I need, look, there's no, that's what I call a real vague transition from here to here, okay? So I need to get in here and just, uh, knock out a little bit more so let me I'm gonna do that too next now that I got so I'm just gonna sit here paint for a little bit see this is what happens I jump around too much when I'm working so let me just sit and paint for a little hopefully you guys won't find this too boring okay let's just swab some areas get them to blend a little then I'll come over there and get some better highlights in I got some areas to uh, clean up a little bit too Okay, take my eraser, 100%. Also, if you have to do some cleanup too, something else that works really nice is just uh, getting in there sometimes with just a real basic um, lasso and just selecting an area and just deleting it and getting a nice hard edge that way, that can work too. Okay. I'm trying to paint on another layer above so you can see any changes that I might be doing. I'm a big proponent of that. So you can see how things are transitioning or moving about and how it looks real or not real, right? Okay. Here, let me get in here. I want to get some of that, more of that snow. So what I'm going to do to blend some of that in is I'm just going to stamp it. Stamp some of this right here. Come up to about 40. Okay. Now this is where you got to commit to the layer, right? I'm not getting it. So look at that. That's what I've done so far. I just blended a little bit together here. Let's move that together. I need to just stamp this. Actually, it's to save myself some time. This is how I'd probably do it. I just copy and paste and I might move a chunk over there like that and distort it a little bit. So it feels different. And then what I do is um, stamp on top of that. See, and I get that nice little blend that fades off in there. And then I could come back, since that's on another layer, I can come back and do erase and go down to like 20% and just sort of get this, maybe even 10% too, blend this, get these edges to blend in a little bit. Yeah, like right in there, get some of that to fall back. Trying to get some of that cool little, little side to come in there. Pull a little bit more of that out. <clears throat> okay, I think I'm gonna stop. I'm at 15 minutes right now. I'm gonna stop the recorder. I'll do some stuff and then I'll show you the difference. So I'll be right back.
okay? Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm just still working on this. Uh, let me just show you a couple things that I did. So let me take that off there, okay? And I just, I'm adding up, going up in here. I'm trying to finalize some of that. I wanted to darken this foreground, so I actually already did. I selected that with levels. I darkened it, and so these are the two layers that I've sort of put on. I'm darkening a little bit of this edge coming in here. And now I just want to get a, a rock transition from these rocks here coming forward. So what I like to do for that is I'm just going to select like little rock faces in here that look like they could be appealing and look, you know, somewhat realistic, I guess, and just sort of select some of these. And that could be a little bit of the shadow side and, and in here. That could be a little shadow side there. That maybe that's a little gradient there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in with my brush and I'm going to just swab a couple colors going across like this. See, I'm just going to put a little bit of dark on that side. Go a little across a little bit there. A um, little bit darker in that corner. Fade it off a little. Let's see, do a little here, a little there. And then I'm going to change up a swipe or two of the color so it's not all the same. So then I might come in, grab a little bit more of that blue right there and just sort of hit a little bit going across. You know, so it's just a little bit. You're going to have variations in stone, right? There we go. Deselect. So now I sort of get this transition. It's almost like a little plateau. You're going from here, see that? And then you jump to like here. So, you know, um, I might take some of that white and just brush on a little bit more of a, of a little highlight on there. Now, hold on a minute. i got a layer somewhere above it. There it goes. So I have a little, let me erase that little speck on there. Okay. I know I'm really picky, but I like that transition from here into there. So let's do the same thing. I'll get some more rocks in here, and I like the little sparkle of light. So that those little glimmers of light, if I get that in here, which I can, it won't be a problem. That'll really allow the eye to sort of push up over here. So let me finishing this rock and that rock. That was a copy and I ended up pasting it and I used some of that there. So I want to create a little bit of variation on that right now. So let me just merge what I have here together. Just take a look at the difference before, after, a little bit more defined, right? And he just, you know, there. I had a student ask me the, the other day, they're like, you know, hey, how do I get this to work? Or how do I, the, the, there's never like an exact recipe for it. You know, the, the, there's not, you just, you get in there and you just keep working on something and you keep developing it and seeing where it where it takes you. That's it. You know, it is a lot easier when you're not talking into a microphone, that's for sure. Because then you can focus a little bit more. I tend to get more accomplished when I get into the zone and I'm listening to some good music. And right now, I can't really listen to good music when I'm uh, working on... Uh, See, I can't even talk when I'm working on recording because any music already had this this negative downside with um, with YouTube because anything that I record, if I doesn't get approved on YouTube, uh, I'm in trouble. And um, I've already had that happen once, and it wasn't a good experience where I did a great little demo, and YouTube rejected it because the artist wouldn't give me permission. Come on, what communist, right? All right, just kidding about the communist comment. I have, I don't want to offend anybody. We're all entitled to our beliefs. Get some, again, just going to hit this with a couple texture. Look, boom, come down here, go a little bit across there. I like that little, little bit of blue that was in there. Let's, you know, throw a little bit more or something, maybe a teeny bit of brown in there like that. Just, you know, a little bit of variant. Okay. There, so I, I sort of like that. Now I have this like, I have this little plateau. I got this here. It's starting to come together a lot more for me and I'm getting what I call a solid transition. Now, this could be even solider because when I get up here, look at the foreground. The foreground's like awfully dark. See that? So what I might do is let's move that layer up above now and it'll affect everything in the foreground too. So I wanted to find some of this out here. Let's see if I can save some time and maybe just come in here and just take an area that I've already painted on that layer, copy and paste it. What if I just move that over here, transform that a little bit, and to see if I can get some type of cool pattern that starts to work for me in here. So it's not bad. Nah, it's not good either. Try to transform it again. I like to do this. Because sometimes you can come up like what if it's like right on that edge, sort of like that, and there's a little bit of snow that blends in like that. Um, let's try flipping it horizontally.
go back a couple steps. And let's flip it back. I don't like that. Actually, that's not bad, like in the foreground, sort of, like a huge white rock there. Actually, that's pretty cool. I like that, but too light, right? we got to darken that puppy up, right? So let's go to levels here right now. Look at that. Yeah, it's darken that guy up. It's in the foreground. It's in some shadow. Uh, the only thing I don't like is it got a little too dark in there. That's almost a pure black. So if I swab it, look, bam. See that? Really down there in that black quadrant, I want to lighten that up a little bit. So what I'm going to do right now to do some of that is uh, come over here with my brush and I'll just grab some of this other value. I'm just going to paint on top of it and sort of blend it in, fade it in there. Talked about fading stuff back a little bit. Some of the black isn't bad sometimes, you know. It's like uh, having little creases of shadows can work really well, but too much black just flattens stuff, you know. Let's see if I can blend in and get in a little sort of a neutral little value set there. Get that to fade in a little bit. Okay, that's pretty cool. Get that to fade across. Throw a little bit of dirty snow in there, a little texture or two in there, you know. Gotta love the, what the brush can do. It just adds a cool little feel. So that's nice. It's definitely a lot darker. Um, still want to just hit it and knock it back just a little bit. So you know there's some snow there, but it's in the foreground, much darker. Again, I was talking to students about that gradient transition. You know, let's take a look at what's happening here. You know, look at that. Boom, darker. Okay, it's a little bit lighter. That's why I was saying I need to knock back that snow a little bit, but that's not nearly the same intensity as like what's in here. And even over here, we're up there a little bit, but that needs to go a little bit darker there. That's okay, we can do that. So just take our brush and um, let me come over here. What brush do I want? Let's just use a soft round real quick. Ooh, not like that. There we go. Let's just get some of that faded back. And I don't want to black. I get a little bit more blue in there. Okay. Right. There we go. There. Okay. Um, and then I just want to select some of this. I just want to make a big, like, patch of snow, I think, in here. That way it, it sort of complements like from here to there and then when like going along these little stepping stones. Okay. In order to do that though, I'm going to have to copy and paste from our foreground right here and I'll copy that. Copy. And then what I'll do is I'll come back over here. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to keep these layers together so you can see the progress, right? So now I'm going to paste and it never pastes where I want it to. Where'd it go? It's right there. Let's see. If I go move tool. Okay. Let me command Z and back up there. I pasted something wrong. Foreground. There we go. Copy. Paste. Bring that up a little bit. Let's go to levels. And um, let's make that a little bit more. It doesn't have to be too bright. That's pretty cool. Just like that. A little darker. Okay. And then blend some of it in. I got a hard edge there, right? So I'm going to take my eraser, go to like 30 or 40. I have a, it looks like a little rock there. So part of that rock shines through. Okay. There, I'm just going to leave that. It's just like a little, little ledge identifies a change in plane from here to there. That's it. There. So now I, I sort of like that transition. I go from here. I got a couple stones. Jump up here. So let's talk about, let's move back here now. And um, in just a second, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about identifying that for a little bit. Okay. And so look, let's take a look at the difference. Let me show you what I've worked on over the past, what, like 20 minutes or so. Sorry, let me zoom out for a minute. Okay, and let's just look at some of the... There we go. See that? That's it. Just identified a little bit more, not too much. Pulled some stuff together. We have noticeable foreground. Our eye goes back in detail to get back in here. And now let's get back in here and we'll paint on top of that. Okay? All right. So first thing I'm going to do, let me save my file in case my computer crashes. So let's save this, and now we're going to save over the other one, and we'll call this part four. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. Yes. Okay. Let me replace it. Okay. All right. So um, 
area in the background here, what we're going to do is I'm just going to, we just need to get rid of the line. That's it. it. You're not going to see that type of line around it. Okay. So I'm going to pause, paint, and I'll show you what I did. Be right back. Okay, guys, welcome back. So let me show you what I did now. I, I told you I was, you know, I working on these, uh, the background mountains here a little bit. They're a little dark. I'm going to lighten them, but I had a lot of line in there. And so what I did is, voila, I just sort of painted on top of it. Um, uh, try to get a little bit of, um, found some ground layer. And then I just took my brush and sort of hit it across to create sort of that speckle in there. So I need to adjust that just a teeny bit because you can see a little bit of a line in there. And that line is going to be noticeable if I go to print. So I'm just going to grab some highlights, some darks, throw it, throw it along the base there. Get this to sort of blend in just a little bit more on top of there, okay? Actually, let me zoom in to that. See? See how that line, that's a very distinctive line there, right? Right. Okay, so uh, hold on a minute. That's why I was on the wrong layer again. Good job, Phil. There we go. Just get this stuff to blend in a little. Okay, little pepper highlights here or there. Not too many. And so if you want to create that nice sort of, you know, think of snow blowing. It's just like, you know, you can step a little bit, some highlights in there. Make sure your brush is up, you know, and you can just come in here and just sort of put a couple little highlights across. Um, and like I showed you before, if you want to create that sort of gr gradient effect of snow, all you have to do is just create a layer. And um, here we'll do it again right now. Go to, go to a pure white. That way you can adjust it. And watch, I'm going to take my brush that I have right now. I'm not even going to change. I thought this is a pretty gritty brush. Let's see. Yeah, see that? Let's go across a little bit like that. Now watch, then do this. Make it look like winds blowing, like, you know, streaks of snow. Sort of like that. Then with that, watch, I'm going to hit Control H so I can't see it. Go back to my brush. Then I'm just going to sort of, oop, that was a little too bright there. Let's just sort of lightly go across. Let's try again. Hold on a minute. Yeah, I'm, always, I'm on another, my old Cintiq today. It doesn't work quite as good, but that's okay. And a couple speckles in there like so. All right. Cool. Happy mistakes, right? There we go. And voila. Here we go. That's it. See what I did? So deselect V. Look at that. It's on another layer. Right, and that's what's awesome. If you take that and you transform it, you bring that down nice and low. Do you see how that just fits right in there? Look at that. Oh, look at that. It fits right over the top there, and it looks like snow just sort of piling up. So um, it just over brightens a little bit there. Do you see that? That's a little bright over there, but that's not bad. I sort of like that transition that gradiates through. Let's duplicate that layer again. Let's use it to our benefit. Let's come over. Let's put a little bit of snow cap on that mountain, let's say. Let's squash this guy down a little bit. Maybe we raise him a little bit like that. And we get him in um, like that sort of graphic feel, like something maybe in there a little bit, right? And now let's go erase a little bit, right? Let's take our lasso, get rid of the areas that we don't want. I'm not going to want much from back in here. So let's just delete that. That's gone. Deselect. Let's go into erase. Let's add a little bit of a hill there. Let's get that hill back in there. Okay, let's get some of that back in. See, that's sort of cool. Fades a little bit. Take a little bit off of here. Um, definitely come in here. And let me just erase some of that off right there. Oops. I had that little overspray. There, that's pretty cool. And then let's go blend that in. Let's go to like 20% and just sort of go across part of that edge and get that to come across. See, that's it. Nothing more. Just got a couple little highlights. Um, I might move. See that highlight right there? That's okay, Look, but that doesn't fit. You can see there's rocks in there. So let's move it. We'll take it. Let's transform it. Let's use it to our benefit. I move it up and um, maybe we can put some of that snow like right up in here or so. There, deselect, okay? That's fine. Okay, cool. So there are my mountains sort of roughed in. Okay, I'm going to leave them alone right now. Let me show you everything on there, on the recording. So look, let's take a look. See that? Bazinga. Okay, there we go. We painted in some more some uh, more sky. This is a little too white for me, but I'll deal with that a little bit later. That's easy. I mean, that's just, 
if I want to die that down, I could take any part of my drawing like this. I can uh, watch. I'll do it real quick. I can copy and paste, and I can just bring that over. All right, it is 11 o'clock at night, and I'm getting a little tired, and I grabbed the wrong layer. Let's do that again, folks. Hold on. That's why we merge layers, right? Merge those two together. There we go. So now if I just come in here and just take a little bit of that, okay, and if I copy and paste that, and then if I move that over here, all I got to do is come here, let's just distort this. Okay, get it in here. Actually, it's actually so easy. Transform it again. Um, let's distort. Let's pull that end all the way down like this. Bring in a little bit in here. And then if I just drop the opacity on it a little bit. See that? It just blends automatically. Now, actually, I like that a lot. See, it just created a little stroke. It blends down that white. A little bit easier transition. So like a little strip here, a little dark, a little light, a, little, a couple little highlights, got a little mountain there, another mountain there. That's it. We're done with that. It's background. We don't need it. That's not where we're going. That's not the most important thing. That's where we were. And that's what Phil added in. Okay? That easy. Okay? No more. Time to walk away. Again, do a little bit here, a little bit there, walk away. I never really addressed that area until now. So now I'm going to leave it. So let's zoom out and take a look at what we have. So you can definitely see it's starting to come together a little bit more. Uh, I got some cool detail in here where the eye staying focused. Uh, if I get some highlights in here, some cool shadows. I think what we'll do now is let's just talk a little bit about this I haven't resolved, and that's because I was going to throw a ship in here somehow. I still want to knock back those little hexagons. Those things are driving me nuts. But real quick, just to throw this at the end of the lecture, um, one thing I noticed is there's a little bit of a light concern that I have. This light is like light coming from above or from right here. So I need to address that and because I have a decision to make in my mountains in the back here. Part of my decision is... is um, Hold on, I'm on a different computer and I don't have my same hotkeys. Let me do it this way. So if I flip the mountains around like this, that could work a little bit better because if I have light coming in this way, the highlights match the highlights on the rocks. Okay. Otherwise, if the light's coming down, it could be a little bit confusing from above. So that's something that I have to sort of address and think about. So... It's not bad right there. Again, light could be coming from this way, but what, what's going to help me in that is my shadow. And so my shadows, when I create a shadow, I like to dictate part of my shadow around um, the form of the object that would best enhance the composition. And this is what's so cool about shadow. So let's say the light was coming down here, right? So I'm getting highlights here. I could put some in there. I got highlights on there, highlights hitting here. So what I could do is imagine the shadows, not the highlights. So I can come in here now and say, hey, you know what? This might cast in like a good, I'm going to wrap, I'm going to imagine I'm drawing a line on top of the, um, the structure. Okay, excuse me, on the typology of the rock formation. Okay, this whole little area in here might be just like all dedicated shadow. And then watch, here's the best part. Here's the fun part. And maybe where that hits here, oops, back up there. And then maybe there's shadow here. And then the shadow, look, drops this way, comes off of that edge, wraps around, comes down here, comes up over that rock, up over that rock, and then back up to like here. Okay, like that. Now watch what happens if I go to levels. Okay, um, let's try that again. That's why, dummy fill. Hold on, I'm on the wrong layer. Accidentally duplicate. I want to make a copy of it just in case. There we go. Delete. Yes. Delete. Delete that one. Yes. And there we go. Okay, and if I go to levels now, see how that can be like a sort of cool, I gotta watch, it gets too dark in there, but I can create a cool little shadow there, right? So another way that we should have learned before how we can also create shadows is that, and I like this way a little bit more because I can create some cool gradients off of that, is that as I have that selected, if I get control H right now, and if I go back over here and take my brush and swab a little bit darker color, let's start off with like 70% grade and start to go across like this. Then I'm gonna drop down to like 30 and sort of block in a little bit more. Then go down into like a 20, 
and get that to sort of lightly fade in there. Okay, so I get a little bit of a gradient. Or you could use the gradient tool. That's pure color right now on there, right? But look at what happens when Phil comes in here and drops that down. Voila! See that? I got a cool little shadow hitting that that really pops that. Then I could erase a little bit more. So look, let me label that. Let's call that shadow. Okay, so that's a lot of fun because see, now my eye is starting to come up here. My atmospheric perspective is still pretty good. Okay, let's double check that. Look, I'm still pretty dark up here, you know. It's getting really dark in there. And then here, it's definitely starting to lighting up in that mid area. And then when I get to the back, that's starting to lighten up too. See that? So my atmospheric perspective is working pretty good. Okay. Um, and the other thing I could do, let's look at it as a tonal study. Let's see how it's working. And take off. Look at the shadow difference. See what that shadow does? really gets my eye to sort of pop in there. So I get a couple little shadows in there and not just there. What if light's coming down hitting there? I can actually use shadows as directional light to pull me to that area. So let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So watch, I gotta see if I can pull this off with, um, I have multiple layers here. Let me take all this off. I don't wanna forget. Um, actually, let's just do it like this. Just like I did before. I'm gonna create another layer above right here, this will be shadow two. And look, now I'm gonna come over here where those shadows come down. Let me turn that shadow up a little bit more, just so I can see where it was, okay? I'm gonna come back to this layer 14 and imagine that shadow now, okay? Coming down here, hitting this rock, and then wrapping up and over the form. See that? Like that. Maybe it even comes up over here a little bit, wraps over that. And again, I'm going to go over the object. Maybe it dips down there through a little crevasse up here, up there. And maybe part of that shadow connects over. See how that could connect in there? And then maybe part of that other shadow comes through here a little bit more. And then sort of overlaps, comes down over here. It's a great way to help show form. Wrapping, remember, it's just like wrapping shapes with rubber bands, right? And that could be another type of shadow. Maybe there's a cloud in the sky. Who knows what it is? There might just be a cool shadow that can transition. So let's do the same thing. I'm gonna go to my brush and um, let's start off at about a 70 or 80% grade. Oops, no. Hi guys, sorry about that. Welcome back. Um, I got that critical warning error from my computer, which means my hard drive is getting filled and maxing out. So I had to address those concerns really quick. So let's talk about shadows again. I go back to what we were doing here. I was overlapping a couple of shadows that could be right here. And um, I actually had to like jump up, wait for my computer to finish what it was doing, um, which was almost about to die, you know, and that was freaking me out a little bit. So anyway, let's get some shadows in here. Also, I was looking at this and I like the idea of maybe this, there's like a shadow that comes through here and just sort of wraps itself over, down and around, let's say, some of this mountain area in here. Can allow me to get in there and really get some good shape and form. Okay? So, a little rule about shadows, right? They're going to be a little darker to us, they're going to recede away, they're going to get lighter. That's going to be just a normal atmospheric trans transition. Um, also, shadows from the point that they cast from can go from dark to light. Being further back, it's going to be a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do now is let's go ahead and um, and match that other... Sorry, make sure I'm on the right layer here. It's going to match that other value that we had there as I do my shadows right now. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to come back in and just raise that to 100% so I know exactly what it was. And I think I grabbed like this color right here. And then I'm going to come back here, just go to layer 14. And then I'm just going to sort of scratch across and look at it, get a little bit darker, darker. I really like this brush, by the way. However, though, let's move that up above really quick. Why? I need it up on top of my foreground layer. And I'm going to move this up above because I need it to affect all the layers right now. Okay, so here we are. We're back on this Shadow 14. Look, I started a paint in there. So I'm going to sort of go a little bit darker here. And then, look, I'm going to try to go across and get this to fade out. Now, here's the thing for you to think about about shadows, right? As shadows cast, and they go from dark, look at how nice that brush is. It puts such a cool, scratchy little detail in there, doesn't it? And give me a second here. I need to raise above another layer. That's why. This layer here was my uh, foreground detail layer that I had for you guys. 
FG detail. However, though, I just noticed that little pop area that popped up right there. Oh, that's my shadow I'm painting in. I can't command. That's all right. I can erase a little. So what's cool with this brush, I can get the brush to try to stroke along part of the surface, the angle of the surface that's taking place. Okay, like so. Like that. It's a little bit darker here. Goes in there. Okay, let's deselect. That's what we have, right? And let's see what happens now. Remember, this was our... Um, hold on a minute. I just did a mistake. I went to that layer. Hold on, guys. I made a mistake. There we go. It's back on layer 14. Whew. Simple mistake. Too busy talking, not paying attention, right? That was my detail layer, okay? Let me drop that back down in there. I need to label it correctly. Foreground, that's the detail I was just doing for you earlier in this demo. This is why you can't have too many layers, right? These, and then that, now I'm back on the shadow layers, okay? Yes, that one and this one here. Okay, and I'm about to merge 14 with shadow, so that's why it's like that. So let's go back to brush now. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna keep brushing in, and try to go along part of the surface structure there. Fade it, get a little bit lighter, 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 lighter. Same thing in here, a little bit lighter, get a little bit darker, we come in here. Okay, that's it. All right, and now I'm gonna say deselect, okay? And what I can do is let's fade it all down. So remember we dropped this quite a bit. So if I fade that down, and we get a, like a little shadow there, and then I come back over here and I take this, and I start to fade that down a little bit there too. See, it just creates a natural little area of detail and some of it I want to I can erase a little bit in here to get to blend in but I just do that real quick as a demo for you guys just to sort of show you how you can adjust a little bit of an object now I don't know if that really fits in there right there I'm not liking that one as much but I am liking what I put in right there I just need to drop it down a teeny bit more like that okay it just helps turn some of those shapes and gets my eye to focus in there especially if I come along and I start putting a little bit of a of an orange against that blue, some compliment, you know, it'll blast that area out and it'll really punch that up, okay? And then my idea was having a ship or something in there, okay? All right, so with that said and done, I mentioned that's sort of my polishing phase. I polished my foreground, my midground here, I polished the mountains in the background. Quite a bit of polishing has been going on there, right? And, you know, if I come back, let's see if I can take a look at all this here. Let me combine all this together. And we hit Command E. So let's take a look. That's what we did all there. That really uh, locked that up, right? We had uh, more. Sorry, that was a duplicate right there. Let me delete that. Yes, delete the master. Wait, hold on a minute. I think I might have deleted the. I think just duplicating that layer just made it a little bit richer, which isn't too bad, but I didn't want it. Let's delete it. Okay. And then down here. You can see what we had with part of this area down in here and how we resolved some of that okay so pretty cool this i'll worry about at the very end what i want to do now is um, what i talked about next was making a ship or two for scale scale is really important and the other thing too is i look back up here at my midground. the other thing is that this really just sticks out at like an eyesore to me that structure um i think i need to go in here i need to dull this down a little bit it's just too a little bit too much detail in there right now so how am i going to dull it down well i'm just going to take my brush here and then i'm just going to paint little bits on it so i'm just trying to get rid of some of those distinct highlights um, there's nothing wrong with having something that comes in here and changes the shape a little bit like maybe there's something that drops in here it's like a you know a decoration you know it could be a little bit darker so i can do that just come in here and just sort of flatten that out a little bit boom okay Oops. Select. It's trying to make it not be so so dark in there. Get a couple little highlights in there, a little too much. Blend some of those in. That's pretty cool. That fades that back a little bit. Same thing here. Lots of little milks and grannies in there, right? It's time to kill that down. Knock it down just a little bit here. Get rid of some of that, all that detail in there. Oop, it's a little too bright.
Okay. And this was some of the area that I threw in there real quick, and I never really finished working on that. Let's see if I can just blend a little bit in there. Okay, all right, a little bit easier, a little bit better there. I'm zoomed in really close, but it's not as defining, and I could still knock a little bit of that out in there. Okay, all right, let's talk about the fun part. Let's get into the ship here. Okay, here's, um, let me, I tried pacing those mountains, and they didn't quite work. Here's my oil refinery picture that I had before, right? Let's make a spaceship with an oil refinery. It's actually a lot of fun, and you just find, just get, Get a chunk of it that doesn't have the blue sky. See what we can do with that right there. Okay. And actually, this feels like a ship there, too. That's pretty neat. Let's try that first. That's pretty awesome, right? So look, copy that, okay? Come back over to your piece here. And watch, I'm going to hit paste in here. And hit transform. Let's transform that guy up a little bit. Man, it already feels like a... Oops. already feels like a ship, Okay. I'm going to run that through a filter. Filter. Filter gallery. Okay. Just run it over filter so it doesn't look so dang photo real, you know. Film grain, palette knife, you know, poster edges. Sometimes poster edges doesn't work. There, that's cool. There we go. Actually, do it again. Now that it'll remember it, I could just go up and tell it filter gallery so it'll remember the last action that I did and blur it out a little bit more. Okay. Anyway. Um. Here, and this is what I do is I just come in here and I take this and this is literally how easy it is um, I'm just gonna transform this rotate it to the side a little bit and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go to distort I'm gonna grab a back end like that and I'm gonna grab another end like that okay and you just start to see weird patterns taking place and then you can see how you might be able to paint on top of some of those patterns and get something going okay um, so what I like to do when I do a ship is I need something to work off of first. I need, you know, what I call like a base silhouette. So let me do that. Let me turn that layer off. I'll come right back to that guy. So I'm going to do a silhouette real quick here. I'm imagining my, my ship maybe looks something like this and has an arch to it. Maybe has a little bit of a body base like this. Oops. Watch that last part there. Let's deselect that. We didn't mean to get that. Okay. Actually, it's a start over. A little bit of an arch like that. Look at Star Trek. Okay, and then I might add something to it like this. And then I'm imagining for silhouette purposes, it has some kind of a cool fin that comes out. And then I might see part of that fin over there or something. Something like that, let's say. Okay? All right, done. See that? Oh, you're like, Phil, but that's not a ship. I know, but we're getting there. Okay, there. Here's to take a brown. And let's just take our brush here. And voila. And just turn this into... Remember the importance of our silhouettes, right? There we go. So now it looks like we could have a little ship there. That little, that didn't select. So what I'm going to do now is come in here and select that little wing. It was supposed to be there. Okay. Brush. There we go. Okay, that's it. Okay. It's not much of a ship right now, is it? No, it's not. Okay. Sort of like, what if I had some weird shape in the front there and it has another little fin that come off like that there we go okay all right so that's the start of my ship shape now i'm going to come back over take that other texture and let's put it on top and i'm just going to transform it and see what i can use out of it okay let's see if i can get that to blend in there somehow and drop the opacity down a little bit Okay, see if I can get part of it to to fit in there somehow or look like. So sometimes it's, if I'm not getting something that's working right off, like that's not working right there, I take that little photo photo blend I'm going to use. I'm watching and transform it. Let's just flip it like this and let's just squash the damn thing. Look, boom, like that. Okay, boom, 
bring it together like that. It's distort. Got a little bit of crookedness going there. Something like that. Okay. And then I might take that and I start to blend it over a little bit. And see if I can get that to fit into my piece somehow. I know you're like, what the hell is he talking about? Bear with me, you'll see. Just see it like that, like there. Okay, it's not quite what I wanted, but it's all right. I'm getting frustrated right now. My mind's starting to shut down as my computer is because I'm starting to get a little bit tired. Okay, there we go. Let's go to transform. And I'm going to warp that real quick. Warp. So I'm just going to grab this side here. Oops. Grab that over. Let's grab that. Bend a little bit of that. Okay. This isn't really working quite the way I wanted it to, but we'll see if we what we come up with in a minute here. Okay. Alright. Now let's erase parts we don't want we don't want. Okay, make sure I'm just take the lasso real quick and just select some of this. Okay, there we go. Delete, boom, deselect. And then let's come in here. Try that. Come on. Hold on. I'll put my glasses back on. I'm getting blind. Here. There, I'm going to get that little wing in there. I have the little cutout. There we go. That's good. Okay. I can just move that away. I might be able to use it to something else. So, you see what that did? It just created a really cool, just little pattern around part of that. Now I could come in and paint a little bit more and find a way to see. It almost looks like, see, that's like a white highlighted panel. There's part of the canopy or whatever. Do you see what I'm going for here? So, um, that's awesome. I could use that to my benefit. Look, I even want to use this now. I notice this little part down here that's a little darker. Let's move that over there. Here, I'm going to transform and see if I can flip it the other way. Okay. And then I paint on it. That's it. I get something in there, roughed out. Ooh, actually, look at that. That'll be the, it could be part of the other fin down there on the other side. Okay. I just love this. It's like a natural way to work where you just create all kinds of variations and patterns. And you never know what you're going to get. And sometimes you can get something that ends up being really cool that you never even thought of. Like that. Perfect. Okay. Now, but I need to delete that. Oops. Did it end up on, no, it didn't end up on another layer. Copy, delete, paste it. Bring it back over here. I'm just going to have that back in there. And now let's erase some of it. Drop the opacity down a little bit. And now I'll just paint right on top of it. That's the fun part. Okay. Um, let's go to eraser here real quick. Take this off here. Just go to lasso. Boom. That part's gone. Deselect. Oops. Okay. not erasing I'm getting another critical warning from Camtasia critical warning your computer is about to explode okay all right deselect let's go to levels it's darkening up it's back of the ship a little bit come on deselect <laughs> Hi guys, sorry about that. I'm back again to finish the ship. Uh, I had to go on my, my desktop real quick and delete about 13 gigabytes of information because these video files get pretty large and it was just uh, killing killing me there. So anyway, let's go back to what we're doing. Look, I photo montaged this in um, and again, I just blending a couple little, little elements in there. 
Okay, actually, I sort of like that little fin. It gives me an idea. So now what I like to do is look at how quick I did that. Look, I have a silhouette, a simple silhouette, nothing fancy, right? Look, I threw that surface on there. Um, let's just go ahead and let, we're not even going to need that there, so let's just delete that. Okay, and I have a little something dark there. Again, the reason why I do this is that it's just, it fills in, it gives me somewhere to start. Instead, I'm not starting with just an empty canvas, okay? I can lighten this and adjust it later. I can have the ship landing as someone walking out. It'll start to create a lot of depth and scale in my piece. Okay, so let's commit to some of this. I'm going to merge these two together. Boom, that's done. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I like that so much and it's working. Look, I can even blend it in a little bit. Drop it down to look about 75% like that. I have a little pattern on that shift now. Okay, there, I'm going to select that. Now, let's put the details in. Let's start with what we know. Um, this is going to be a back area, some thrusters. So what I might do is I might just come in here with my selection tool. Select a little back area like that. And now it's just the power of levels. Look at that. So if I darken that a little bit, that might be sort of the back somehow. And um, then I like to come in and just paint and see what I discover. So for, I really like this. You know, I gave you guys my brushes. These are some other brushes I have too. Um, what's this silhouette sketch? I don't remember that. But my oily, oh, same thing. I just modified it. But my oily hard edge here, I really like that brush so much because I find it to be just very, very user friendly. And um, it's just, if I'm at like 100%, 80% opacity, I just feel like I can get some really cool you know, looks with that. And it just has sort of a scratchy feel to it. So what I'm going to do here is just come in here and just sort of, you know, I have this ship that I was starting to block out and paint. I'm going to make this backside a little bit darker. Okay. So adjusting my value is going down about 70% here. So I got like a rear wing there. Um, I want to paint a little bit more in there, get rid of some of that red, because I am going to probably come in there for a little bit of a thruster. And then I'm going to paint up a little side fin that's sticking up a little bit like that. Okay, and then come in and sort of unite this together. I might bring some of this value. Now, you gotta remember the surface flow of the body, right? The ship went down with a curve. It didn't have a line in there. If there was a fin coming out, that'd be okay, but that's not how it was when I was working on it before. So what I'm gonna do is see if I can come in here and, and change a little bit of this. So I'm gonna see if I can slope back that body a little bit like that. Okay, and then come in and sort of get this area to sort of bend and wrap down to that fin, cut right through there like that. Okay, cool. See, it already feels like a ship, doesn't it? Just throwing that little texture variant on there, it allows me to get in there and really just sort of come up with ideas and feels for what this guy might look like. There we go, okay. So look at that, I already have sort of a cool little ship. So I, I mentioned um, before to a couple of you guys about adding thrusters and then also a little light. So let's do that, we'll do that in just a second here. Okay, this ended up looking like a little thruster right in here, but I'll, we'll come back to that in just a second. So I wanna paint over that a little bit more. Get that knocked in, there we go. That's pretty cool like that. Uh, I wanna get a little bit of lighter brown, maybe there's just a, a light line in here to go down about a 30 percent um little little details right like there could be a little line that sort of comes in here there could be something that separates part of that thruster unit it could be like a top thruster a rear thruster see so yeah, just putting just little indications it could be a little linear detail in there maybe there's a little angle on that fin some type of linear detail or something just so it's not so dark right like I know, totally Phil, no, I'm just kidding. Um, see how I, that little dark groove in there, I like that a lot. Let's see if I can put another one down in here and make it look like it's sort of a cockpit. So I'm just gonna select it. Let's go to levels real quick. Okay, and just darken that up like that, bam. Okay, deselect. So look at that, I'm already in the neighborhood of a ship, just, you know, not like that, but I, I can get it into my piece, I can lighten it put some thrusters on it and and I could have that thing like turning or banking, you know, easily. I can have that thing look like it's turning or going in to part of the scene. Or what if it was even had like landed like right here. So here, let's bring that up to the foreground here. So imagine if I had it there landed and then there's a little guy standing there, I start to set the scale. Okay. So anyway, I'm doing this real quick here because I don't want the video 
to give me problems again. So what I'm going to do right now is create a little flare. This is really easy to do. So I want to go with a warm, like a nice orange of some kind, like this. Okay. And what I'm going to do, it's really, this is really, really fun and it's easy, is just go to your brush, take a decent brush. Um, the round ones tend to work really nice and the, they're nice and soft. And come in here and I'm just watching. I'm going to do this where I can see it pop. So I'm going to do it like right here and I'm just going to sort of, I'm going to hit it like, so it's at its purest orange like that. And I'm going to come over here and just do a little, like that. See that? That's it. That right there, my friends, is a little thruster. See, if I put one there, and then I put one there, put one there, that could look like a little thruster. Okay, let me back up. A couple other ways you can do little thrusters too sometimes is if I come in, back in my brush, maybe it's not as soft. Maybe it has some type of that weird texture that like flows off of it. See, look at that. That can make it look like it's a little jet thrust. Now if I go down to like one and lightly fade that off a little, see that? And then if I go my, make my brush a little bit larger and sort of like there's a little bit of thrust coming off that see how I did that separate layer look I can come in here I'm gonna sort of put that right in there okay and I got a little thruster now coming off the tip of, off of that guy and let's duplicate it see I can put one there now what if watch this what if I take that and maybe it has like a horizontal thruster or something in the back there another little guy let's say like that make it look a little different and let's do it again let's duplicate that layer okay this time I'm gonna bring it upright see if I um, probably can't pull off what I wanted to do but I wanted to make it I probably can I could just paint I could see it get so fussy with a stupid layer and I could just paint it in five seconds but you just get spoiled here I'm gonna create something like this and then watch let's go in here let's erase some of this Okay, and let's go back to 100%. I thought it'd be cool to have like maybe a vertical line thruster like that or something, you know? Don't get carried away, my ballpark students who go out in the left field and do something that's, you know, oh, it's an ecosystem thruster group made that digest paper. Uh, no one's ever going to get that. Stay simple, right? Just a couple of thrusts, that's it. And then what I'm going to do is just come here and just sort of hit that a little bit. And go a little bit lower and just sort of drag across. Just like that. Maybe fan out a little bit of the edges here. Oop, not like that. Just something like that. Okay, there. Now if I come over and take that, see? And if I fit that in there, let's transform it a little bit. There, maybe I, see, it's just like a different little thrust system, that's all. Maybe it has two thrusters. There we go, it's a little bright. Drop the opacity down a little bit. There, okay? So there's part of my ship now coming in here. I have other options that I could do on that ship, okay? Um, first of all, it, I can make it look like it's coming into land. Okay, let's put this all together. Okay. So now it's all one layer. Okay. If I blur that and smudge it a little bit like this, let me show you some variations you can do on a ship to add scale. Okay, so if I smudge this right now, and if I come over here, see if my hotkeys, no, my hotkeys are not remembering. Oops. Uh-oh. Hold on a minute, guys. All right, sorry about that. Um, I'm on a different machine than I normally paint with, so. So look, if I go to smudge, okay. Smudge and blur, great friends. So check it out. Um, if I go in and I smudge, if I wanna look like this thing's hauling ass and flying, see that? Ooh, I warped it a little bit too much. Hold on, I did too much. Look at that, I'm melting. Yeah, my machine's gonna chug. It's still going. Oh, come on, Photoshop. I hit Command Z. Let's see how long it takes it to fix itself. Come on. This machine isn't that old. Get going. Fix yourself. 
All right, guys, hold on just a second. It's going to be just a little bit longer here. Unpause the recorder and let Photoshop finish. Okay, so we finally got it to stop. It's crazy blurness, right? Right. So what I was going to do is I was trying to adjust my brush to lightly put a little bit, what we call like a drag coming off of there, okay? Um, but unfortunately, being on, I'm not on my the computer I usually use at school, and I'm getting quite a bit of a, of a drag here. So it, it could adjust too with the different brushes that I use. I mean, I can try, let's see what happens if I grab this texture fade and brush here. And if I come down, drop my opacity, I was, I got all that because I was at, at uh, 50, let's try 10%. If I just put a little drag right here across, see if it does it. See so if I can get in at like a little bit higher. There we go. See what I'm getting at there? If you get that just sort of on a couple of the tips, sometimes, right? And then if I were to come in and just, you know, lightly, and that's even a little bit heavier. Let's go down a little bit lower. I was at 60%. So there, I just put in that little, like, it's like streaking across. I know it's really minor. And then the other thing then is putting a little bit of a blur on it, on a little bit of it, right? So uh, you come back to the blur tool now, and let's try that. Hopefully that won't crash just as much. And if I come in here and just sort of, like, blur or hit this, I'm see I'm just blurring a little bit more of the detail on there. I'm at 50. I'm not seeing much happening. Let me go to 80. Okay, let's try 100%. Come on, blur tool. Sometimes it's just easier to go do like a Gaussian blur. That's doing it. It's blurring it. See, I'm losing some of the detail that's in there. And if something gets really blurred, it it can create that look of like speeds sort of zooming across, you know. So I'm doing that now to like the back of the ship. I don't know if you can see it. I can notice it. See, I'm losing the detail and I'm blurring part of the shape. Let me do it to a little bit of the front of the ship. Okay, like so. All right, let's go back to our brush. I had a little spot there to fill. Okay. That's it. And it looks like, you know, I'm just messing with it, but look at the difference between that and that. You see the difference? Much more crisper. The other one's blurred out a little bit. So blurring that ship like that, it, it can come in handy because now if I take that so imagine if that was like flying in. Now I would probably redraw it, but I'm just going to cheese ball it right now. Um, that means you shouldn't cheese ball it. Because if I duplicate that chip, that's what students always do. They go, yeah, I'm going to put another one back here. And then I'm going to just make it smaller because I know how to use transform. But see, you can see right there the values aren't working. So it has to be way lighter. Do, do, do. Like that. Okay. And then the scale still isn't nearly correct. So if I go much smaller, there, something like that. Yeah, it can look like there's a pattern of them flying, you know, and then if I take that guy and duplicate him, I'm just doing this really quick. I, I wouldn't keep this in the painting here whatsoever. But this is, some artists, oops, they use this to their benefit. And sometimes you can create some you know, maybe these guys are... Whew. So obviously the, there's a distinct problem with that. And let me address that. And then I'm going to drop his opacity down so he fades into the background. See? Atmospheric perspective, right? As he gets recedes back, he gets a little bit lighter and lighter. And then, then he's really light. And the perspective is changing too. So here he's sort of flying up and over, right? Well, one of the problems is you got to think about the perspective. First of all, his ship has this weird angled arch. We would probably be able to see is above the horizon line. We're going to be able to see underneath that ship. That's rule number one. But I did this real quick just for the demo. So you can put a ship in yours if you like or for scale. Okay, so that's the problem number one. Problem number two is this guy is banking. You got to think of it as he is, he's not just flying in a straight line. That's what's being displayed right now with him being here to here to here. It's a straight line. The ship would be banking. So here, let me see if I can draw this on another layer then. So you need to think about if you're going to have multiple ships in your piece or around your area. Um, what you need to think about is, is if I were to draw that ship sort of turning, you know, 
your that structure so look at look at that is like a center line right to the ship so that ship would be banking in a turn yeah you're like what banking why does it bank well that's what vehicles and ships and cars do they bank around a turn so now oops that was horrible if i draw this guy banked a little bit coming in and then like turning see i've changed part of what the perspective of the vehicle might be or how I might see it. If I, I'm just drawing it, roughing it real quick, let's say, you know, it might change or maybe he's, you know, just draw that you have to draw that path of action. It might be coming in here and like, and then flipping. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. Going another way, turning to the side or whatever. So what I'm getting at is you need to think of this. You need to think of that angle that the ship is at. And as he's here, and he starts to bank, that angle's gonna start to turn. And then maybe he might, let's say if he drops down and came in real low here, he might bank more, and then he might come out of the bank, and so that angle's gonna start to turn. So here, actually here, the angle might be more like that. So I would need to go in and redraw that ship. Because does that make sense? You gotta think of it as a roller coaster. And this vehicle traveling along this roller coaster that's changing in elevation, depth, and then it's banking. So the vehicle is going to bank the same principle. If you're in a car or a motorcycle going fast, you lean to the left or to the right to fit the, the gravitational pull, right? So it's going to be the same thing when you paint it. You're going to have to have that match. So here, the ship should be more like this, sort of maybe coming in. Then he starts to straighten out, and then he comes in and he starts to bank. And then he gets ready to turn and move in that direction, let's say. Okay, just to draw and explain that, because right now, that's like the cheese ball way to get the ship in there, you know, just to throw that at you. Because I know someone's going to do that. They get all duplicate happy and they put like a million ships and then I see it and I'm like, no, too many ships. Okay. So, but what's cool, you know, is I have that original one there still. And who knows, maybe I end up taking this and uh, moving it over a little bit. and Maybe it's coming in to land and it's just like, you know, shh. and if I put thrusters coming out of here, Eliminate these a little bit. It could look like it's landing or getting ready to take off. Okay. All right. Uh, I was just curious if, it, if I were to make it much smaller, how it might feel down there. But it wouldn't. It's too dark. It belongs. Look at the values that are in here. Um, the values belong up in the foreground. See that? They're down low. See that's down low. That's down low. Okay. That's a little lighter. That's just a change in the material surfacing. But most of the values make that ship belong down low. That's why if it has to go in the back, it's going to have to be a lighter value like that. Because look at the difference now. If I come over here and I swab that, look at where my values are. Up, mid. See that? Okay, they're up in the mid range. So even that is much better. And then if I had one, another ship, let's say this guy here. Well, not that guy. Duplicate this guy. Oops. make him much smaller oops see you can't just turn him like that because it doesn't feel right you know it doesn't at all and uh, it doesn't look correct in the piece either he's gonna be much lighter literally fading into the back you see him as like a little dot there okay anyway so that's some skill that's what you can do and then along with that skill let's say you did have a ship let's say I decided to put it there get rid of the thrust and he's just sitting there your next part of your, your scale, your drawing that you get to do is this, is you can come in here and hold on a minute and imagine sketching like a little guy this here. I you know, got a little guy, might be here, you might have like a pack on or something, you know? Um, anything for scale, right? And he might, heck, he might have somebody there with him, who knows, whatever. Standing there in the foreground and then maybe back up here Imagine coming in here, I'm going to sketch it. Imagine if I came up here and I had something like this, and then here I had like this big massive ship up here, like this giant mother starship, and I could see underneath it and everything, and it's in the correct perspective. See what I'm getting at? That's how you can add more to your piece. And now if I, that's, that's driving me nuts, that, the dumb, hold on. There. So now I, if I erase that thruster, Come on, Photoshop's lagging because of the recorder. Let's try that again. Delete. Boom. Okay. So if I hit uh, deselect there, brush, watch if I fade a little bit of that value back in. Or out, I should say. 
get some of that thruster back out, paint a little bit over it, make it look like they're on, right? But imagine if I put those thrusters here going like this, this, maybe one down there or there. Not too many, just a couple, and make it look like the ship's landing or something. Um, that could, you know, they're landing, there's a guy standing here, you have a giant mothership up here. And then I've enhanced part of my composition, I create scale, especially if I have a little bridge up here, and if I'm and if I can come in there and indicate scales like you know of somebody not like that, but if I see like people walking and they're really tiny like that on a bridge, now I'm really going to push that scale. Or even I mentioned to a couple of students the other day, sometimes you might have a windy path that leads to the area of where the characters are going, and then if there's someone in the foreground, we might see them back down here like this. That really sets the scale because now you know, damn, look at how small they are to there. When they get to there, that's like a whole giant city up there, right? Right, that's sort of the point of all this. Okay, so that's making a ship, that's setting scale. Okay, I just threw some of those in there really quick. I do like that little ship, but I don't know if it's the ship for here. Um, I just created that real quick for the demo. There are all kinds of ships you can create very easily. Um, another great exercise for just creating a ship is just coming in and just sort of you know, what I did, you just make a selection like this, something that you like, fill it with dark, and then come in and select areas and then put light on it and then just start painting over it. And that also turns into a ship too. I like that photo technique. A buddy of mine taught me that um, in the studio environment. I thought that was really fun because you come up with these random patterns that you never thought of. And that's the goal sometimes is to, you know, use the system to a way that where something comes out that it would have taken you forever to think about. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this demo up for now. We've been talking quite a bit here. What I am going to do is try to do one last demo and talk about adding some light. I just happened to run out of time tonight. It's 12 o'clock and I need to get the sack. So uh, I will talk to you guys tomorrow and we'll talk a little bit about adding some light, maybe adjusting a little bit of a blue value here in the foreground, getting some warms back here against cools, get that to pop to add a little bit more to leave that monochromatic color scheme a little bit. But monochromatic could be fine. When you guys are first starting off, it gives it's a you know it's an easy way for you to to work uh, to develop work inside your piece and and then to build up from there. Uh, a lot of the the um, the great American illustrators um, did the same thing as they started with black and white monochromatic color screens and then they started to branch out from there and get a little bit more complex and develop their own style from there. So anyway, see you guys. Bye.